Hello everybody, this is Fun Police, and I'm bringing you a video on the new 1.3 update for Fire and Maneuver. Uh, we're going to be going over pretty much everything within this patch, which is quite a big one, uh, including entire mechanics being reworked, balance changes, bug fixes, and a variety of other things. There's a lot to cover, so we'll just jump right into it. If you enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as there will be more content like this in the future. Anyway. Let's start out. So 1.3 is taking a look at a pretty large balance change. Starting out, breakable has been reworked. Units with the breakable trait no longer die when their path is blocked. They also don't automatically fall back from a tile when their cohesion hits zero. Instead, they take one damage at the end of turn whenever they have zero cohesion. Essentially, these units now bleed if they are going to uh, be out of cohesion and next to enemy units. This is a pretty good buff to them because breakable in the previous version where units would fall back and be unable to be ordered were pretty much useless. Nobody used them because it just it was too big of a downside. Now these units, if they're in melee or in close quarters combat, will really quickly lose health, but otherwise they are not going to... Uh, be nearly as ineffective as they were before, and you could actually make good use of them. Then, one of the biggest changes are the charge and range vulnerabilities. They have gone from dealing plus two damage to only plus one damage. This means that if you charge a unit that is vulnerable to charges, it will only take one additional damage. And range vulnerable units like light cavalry, attack column infantry, and similar will only take plus one damage. This is probably one of the biggest changes within the entirety of the update because... Previously, the range vulnerability made it so it was very difficult to use things like attack column and cavalry because they simply took too much damage, often taking three to four damage for being shot at one time if they were hit at all, which at best broke their cohesion, but at worst means that these units often died in one or two shots. And with how prevalent fire at will was previously, uh, that pretty much made them non-viable. These changes now makes it so these units are back on the table. Uh, it is much easier to use cavalry again and also things like attack column by just making it so these units still can't freely walk up to like enemies, but they're not going to be melted because they got shot at one time. The charge vulnerability is essentially there to offset the fact that melee is getting a pretty big buff by becoming viable again. Uh, and I think that's a good change also because now if you charge into like something like open order, they're still taking extra damage, but they're not going to be completely wiped out like they previously did. Another big change is melee drill has had its damage, or pretty much has its effect reworked. Now... It adds plus one damage at the end of each turn a unit is in melee instead of reducing charge damage. What this means essentially is that if you have a melee drill unit in melee, then at the end of every turn it will deal two damage instead of the regular one. This means that melee drill units are now a lot more terrifying because melee drill previously had relatively low impact, often making the units less v easier to chart, not be charged because they would take less damage, but otherwise it didn't do a whole lot. But now melee drill is essentially a twin of range drill, which range drill is still more powerful, but melee drill has definitely like boosted up in numbers because melee drill now will deal a lot of damage especially if you have if you can stack multiple together or do things like that however to compensate for this melee drill has had its cost go up by 30 points instead of tw from the normal 20 so it's now closer in point total to range drill uh, and is going to really cost you another change is that four unit units with 4 hp have been lowered in cost by 10 points. This largely affects the light units uh, that are seen in most nations. For example, in France, things like the... Oh, France actually doesn't have one, my apologies. 
Let's go over to the UK. The British Rifles, these units have 4 health and 3 cohesion, and really didn't have a use before. And that was because it was just better to take the more durable units. Uh, but now, even though they have things like Skirmishing, Range Drill, and Rugged, these Rifles are now one of the cheapest units within rosters. And this is true for a lot of factions. For example, in the Ottomans, these rifled units with muskets are only 55 points, only 5 more points than the standard militia unit. And if you give them rifles, they're only 5 points more expensive than a basic line unit. So these guys are really, really cheap now, which is hopefully going to make them a little more viable. I could see maybe wanting to fit one or two of these in in order to act as cheap range damage, even if they're not the most durable units out there. Then, moving on, the Italians have received two changes. The Italian Grenadiers have received the Rugged Trait, and the Italian Militia has also received the Rugged Trait. This is a really big change, because previously the Italians were, I would say, a bit on the weak side. Uh, but now having access to heavy infantry that can go into like rugged terrain is a very unique thing especially because these guys have range drill grenadiers should be a pretty powerful force now uh very hard to contest in forest lines because not only do they have the fantastic stat line of heavy infantry with the five cohesion but they also are very good at shooting and now can dance in out of rugged terrain with no penalty on top of that, National Guards have gaining Rugged. Now makes them a unique Militia unit. Most Militia units previously were kind of the same, but Italy now has a very cheap unit that it can send into forests if it just needs to contest those or have something there. On top of that, the Bersaglieri for the Italians have had their efficiency has had their ruggedness changed for efficiency. So now, the Bursagliri are no longer able to go into forests. However, efficiency is a very powerful trait. Uh, we've seen how powerful it is in a variety of nations. And combined with shock, these guys are actually, a, I think, overall stronger. Uh, the biggest thing is that they have access... They're able to much more effectively use that shock by doing things like sitting in the back line and then quickly forming attack column and charging in before the enemy can respond. Efficiency just overall makes them a lot more useful compared to their regular or previous versions. And you have plenty of rugged now to offset the loss of this rugged version. Then we have a new change. The max unit count in the game has been changed to 24. Uh, this is a relatively expected change, in my opinion. Going with 24 units is just here to help limit uh, nations that would otherwise uh, bring like 40 units and would lag the game out. Uh, in all honesty, there is not many nations that will be able to bring in uh, like the full 24 units anyway. Uh, so, I don't think this will impact most things. Uh, only in, like, extreme 2v2s with the max amount of points are you going to really feel this change. But it helps to make the game, like, easier to balance. And you still can bring in absolutely monstrous-sized armies. Another change is that the Confederate Stonewall Brigade now has melee drill. Uh, this now makes the Stonewall Brigade very, very interesting. They are very, very expensive now, having range drill, efficiency, efficiency, and melee drill makes them have pretty much three of the most expensive traits in the game. However, this also means that they are among some of the best and most well-rounded infantry out there. Range drill and efficiency has proven to be a very powerful combination on stuff like the French Grenadier of the Guards. Uh, being pretty much one of the biggest reasons why these guys are so powerful. And then the Confederates, the Confederate Stonewall Brigade also is good in melee. Melee drill being a very, very useful trait, because if these guys get into a scuffle, they will now be able to usually out-trade the enemy that has charged into them. 
it's a very powerful combination, but does make them very expensive, and they notably don't get access to rifled breech loaders, which keeps them from being incredibly overpowered. Uh, but I think it's an interesting change overall. I haven't played a lot with it so far, but I'm interested to see how much this, like, how strong this could potentially make the Stonewall Brigade. Another change is that the Bavarian Line Infantry are at a limit of 6 instead of 4. Uh, overall, just allowing you to take a little more Bavarian Line Infantry in the Prussian faction. Which is overall fine. These guys are your only shock units available. So if you want a very heavy uh, shock force, then you can now do this in bigger games. Then we also have horse artillery going up 20 points. Uh, this is because horse artillery in general is just really strong. Uh, although it's not the most powerful thing out there, being able to move two spaces made these... Uh, horse-drawn artillery really powerful because they could move into position very quickly and threaten the enemy. Uh, now the horse artillery is going to be more expensive, so these three-range regular artillery pieces are going to be a little more useful, although if I have to be honest, I don't expect people to really look into these three-range artilleries uh, because the horse is still just worth it if you can afford it, or if otherwise you can also just go with these four range artilleries. Uh, the three range artillery are just so slow and so difficult to utilize that I don't have a lot of faith in seeing them, even with this change. Another thing is that the breakable trait now makes units a little less cheap. It only discounts them by 15 points instead of 20. Uh, this is because breakable, as mentioned above, is a lot more uh, like usable now it's not as like nearly detrimental and as such uh these units are not going to be as spammable to stop people from spamming them and just winning by a human wave uh then we also have a variety of maps that have been removed monte villa which is the massive hill where both sides essentially tried to bum rush to the top of this multi-layered hill uh, you also have a heights map, which has been removed because as it was apparently unstable. And then La Manchelle has also been removed because it was poorly designed. Uh, this is overall, I think, fine. Uh, I personally liked Monte Villa. Uh, I wasn't a biggest fan of these other two maps, but I did actually like Monte Villa, and I thought it just needed a little work on it. Uh, hopefully it'll come back maybe in a future with maybe a better design that'll make it a bit more fun, but I'm a bit sad to see that one go. Then we have a whole bunch of fixes. In order to not drag this video on, uh, I'm just going to let you either pause the video and read these, or you can go in the description and see a link of the patch notes and read them for yourself. Uh, but these are a bunch of bug fixes, uh, which are just essentially fixing a whole bunch of things in the game, which is always good to see. But the next thing we're going to talk about is the melee rework. The melee rework has changed a fair amount of things, uh, which is overall good because melee was a crucial part of fire and maneuver, but is also one of the most buggy aspects of it. So seeing work be done on it, I think is real good. Starting off, melees no longer change direction when additional units join a melee fight. Instead, they just fall back into the reserve. This is really nice because previously, if units would charge into a melee, they'd pretty much just randomly end up facing whatever direction. And this was really annoying because melees could potentially expose the back of units to the enemy, where you would then take back shots and your entire army would melt away at once, uh, which was very frustrating. So this will no longer happen. It also feeds into... A future change where you're going to not retreat in wonky ways uh, and we'll read that down here we also have a variety of melee bugs they're not exactly listed but hopefully these are like some of the more janky things that happened within the uh melee battles then you have the 
Uh, players can no longer retreat through an enemy unit. You have to retreat backwards out of a melee. Uh, this was a really annoying exploit for me because essentially what would happen is that because of how melee like kind of randomly decided where units would face, what would happen is that you could sometimes pull units through the enemy line and end up behind them. And then you could like just lay a thing of fire into the enemy like unit next to it and get a free back shot which was extremely annoying on top of that units with fire orders can no longer use them if they're in a melee this also applies to fire at will i love this change I, one of the most annoying things for me was that fire at will remained active when a unit was in melee and this was such a nightmare because essentially if you tried to pull your unit out of a melee, Fire at Will had like a 60% chance of activating if the enemy had it. And then it would get a free back shot on you, essentially dealing like 6-7 damage and just completely wiping your unit out. Extremely annoying. Uh, I can't tell, I remember games where I won literally because the enemy would charge me with their expensive cavalry. And then they'd try to pull out and the cavalry would take seven damage from a back shot from being from charging into my like militia unit and then trying to pull out of that melee and then being completely wiped out i'm so glad to see that change it'll make melee like a lot more tactical in pinning units down and making it so they can't shoot which is like kind of the point of it in the overall like way you play fire and maneuver there's also an order preview fixes when it comes to charging. Uh, so this is just essentially like a graphical fix. So the units will like appear as they're supposed to when they charge into each other. Uh, when, the melee, when the defender of a melee charges in an extra unit, he won't charge himself anymore. That damage just goes to the enemy. Essentially, it means that adding units into melee is no longer a suicide pact for units already in there for you. Uh, previously, this was a really annoying feature because if you try to charge into an enemy or an ongoing melee, what would happen is that you would back charge yourself and essentially wipe your army out. Essentially meaning that once you got into a melee, those were the forces you committed to it. There was nothing you could do otherwise. Uh, now it's much easier to add other melee units into the fight. And then there is a new mechanic called Clashes. Uh, where the simultaneous turns are now in the game, and if a unit, if two units move into the same tile at the same time, both essentially charge each other and take the frontal charge damage, which is three. So both units will essentially collide and get immediately into a melee. Uh, this is actually nice because previously, uh, units would just randomly get priority over the enemy, and on top of that, uh, clashes were just really annoying because units would just, like, essentially what would happen is that sometimes you'd win a fight, or sometimes you would just lose a race, and then your unit would be out of position and you would lose, uh, and that's fixed now. Clashes now make it so if you're, like, both gunning for a hill, your units might both end up in a melee on top of that hill while the rest of your army catches up which I think is a good way to handle it. Now, the quality of life and mechanical changes. Uh, the game is now fully simultaneous. Uh, this is leading, or this feeds in from the clashes change, uh, but units will now, there's no longer a host priority, which was something that previously existed within the game, which was really annoying uh, because it means that like two units would chart like if a unit if both players would charge at each other the host would just automatically win that uh and that was really annoying so now there there's no randomly getting screwed over because you just happen to not be the host in a game uh and that's very nice to see on top of that uh enemy units can no longer block your fire orders by moving in front of you uh or like in front of your targets the fire order will just apply to the unit that is in range, which is really nice for fire orders to not like just randomly randomly bl be blanked uh, because it was really annoying when you would just simply like have a unit move in front of your target and then your orders would just go to waste. Uh, that was a really annoying thing uh, that could lose you games because you might be relying on these 
fire orders to break an enemy unit or, you know, deal enough damage that they can't do anything for a turn. But now that won't happen. And at least you get a consolidation of something is going to get shot at, uh, which is real nice. Fire at will has been reworked. Uh, instead of being able to leave it on as much as you want, it now expires at the end of every turn. On top of that, fire at will is also broken by artillery charges. This is overall a good change, because the previous fire at will was too strong. It was something that you set up, and then you never touched it again, because it was essentially just free shots uh, endlessly. Now, I don't think that this new system is actually that great. One of the biggest problems with this new system is that it is extremely order-hungry, uh, and you essentially have to spend the first parts of your turn every turn setting up a couple fired wills if you're looking to use it. It's not useless, but it's very situational from what I've played so far. Uh, and this has directly contributed to cavalry, I think, being uh, a little more powerful than they otherwise are, they otherwise should be. Uh, but I think it is definitely an improvement, even if I think there needs to be more work on it. Uh, now there is an indication if you run out of orders, uh, just an error sound, which is nice, uh, so you know you're at the end of it. Helps with visual bugs and whatnot. Uh, the formation button updates to whatever formation you're currently in. Uh, again, a nice quality of life thing. Prices now calculate properly when buying and trading weapons. This is a big thing because previously in the game, uh, if I tried to buy a unit and I did not have the, enough money to buy it, I could not switch weapons with it. But now, I'm able to freely upgrade these units uh, based on what I want, as you see there. I'm able to swap in uh, various weapons, whereas before, see, I would have to like f mess with this like by like giving another unit a musket and then swapping back. But now I can just freely like trade weapons in and it just makes building your faction a little bit easier, which is really, really nice. Then uh, player names are displayed in the lobby. We can see that right over here, uh, which is just a nice thing. So you know who you're fighting. Uh, then we also have health bars are now displayed for buildings. If a unit sat in it, you actually couldn't see it, which made it kind of hard to tell how much more you needed to shoot at it with artillery. Uh, on top of that, the multi-page order system has been made into just a one order that you scroll through. Uh, this just makes it way easier to use stuff, and you don't have to wait for this little animation to go through, uh, which was actually quite annoying, because what would previously happen is that you would load into a game, and you would try to give out a bunch of orders, but then you would just randomly have to, like... Uh, do things. I actually can't show you because it's six orders, but essentially instead of having to go eight orders and then change page, you just scroll up and down. Uh, bad example, my apologies, but hopefully you get the idea, and it's just simply put a lot easier to make use of. Uh, on top of that, we also have an after action report. Then you also can edit the AI's composition in the army. Uh, which is really nice, because now you can test out against certain builds. So, like, as an example, oh, I want to try out, uh, like, I want to try to fight the AI and practice against uh, the Ottomans where they spam a bunch of Cossacks alongside a bunch of Bashis and on some rifles and Egyptian line infantry. You know, and now you're able to edit that, and then the AI will deal with that. AI is still not exactly fantastic, uh, but it's at least a little bit easier to, like, kind of build the thing you want. Hopefully, if the AI gets, uh, like, new difficulties, then that'll be nice so you can test out against harder AIs and overall do better. There are mentions of a massive improvement to the AI, which is notable, although it still is, like, missing some core things. Like, it doesn't start units in a pre-deployed way. Like, they're not in March column. So it's still relatively easy to just kind of overpower the AI, but they are a little, they are better from the little I've played with them. Uh, then you can also uh, 
some new just uh, various things like right clicking units will reveal their range which makes it uh, just a lot easier to tell like at a glance what you need to see when you look at enemy units. Uh, this is a very nice feature to make sure you're not walking into like range of their shots. Uh, then a variety of other changes. On top of that, we also have new content. Uh, first off, a new multiplayer campaign system has been added, although it is quite buggy right now. Uh, it is honestly quite cool from the little I messed around with it. Uh, it's exactly like the standard campaigns that you would do in uh, various things. Like the Crimean War. Essentially, what happens is that you have... Uh, multiple players that are doing various things you know the AI will make moves and then you can go into fights and this can be against an actual person uh, which is really cool although currently it doesn't really work and hopefully it gets fixed uh, soon because it is actually quite a cool system we have a new multi-day battle system uh, which allows you to adjust the time of day amount of days and the speed of the day and night cycle there actually has been a day and night cycle within the game for quite a while. It's just that it took 40 turns to happen, which was just such a long time that, simply put, it just wouldn't really happen. Uh, but now you're able to mess around with this a bit more, uh, which allows you to, like, use the system which essentially at when night comes both sides essentially reset the battlefield uh, and then you essentially just keep fighting battles until someone wins uh, which is a neat thing you get to play like maybe some historical battles like as an example we don't have a map that shows it off yet but if there's a gettysburg map that's ever implemented uh, then you could do like three days and then both sides will redeploy at the start of every day uh, and then you keep fighting until someone wins which could be really cool uh, then there is also, uh, a bunch of new guides available, some new music, uh, and then also the Sarbrucken map has been added to the quick match pool. Uh, then we have some graphic graphics and optimization changes, and then a really cool change is that the fact some certain factions have their flags changed on based on the time period. Uh, as example, you have the Prussian flag in the early period. But then if we go to the late period, then the Prussian flag actually becomes the standard or more recognizable German flag. Because by this point, uh, Germany had fought various wars that made it much closer to being like what would become the German Empire. Uh, and this is when they adopted this flag. This is also true for Austria, Russia, which you can see here, the Russian Empire flag. Also the Austrian then also the American flags, uh, you can see this one here, and notably the Confederacy flag, which is, this was their last flag that they actually had. Uh, and then if we go back to the early period, you'll see a notable difference. Uh, as you see, this is their previous flag. Uh, the American flag is a little different with a few less stars. Uh, the Austrian Empire has its flag changed. And then we also have the Russian Empire with its flag changed. So that's really cool. Uh, also, there's a new mini-map, which we saw quickly when I was showing off uh, in that match. A variety of other nice little things. Uh, and then known issues, and in the next up, uh, a ranked mode and cosmetics, which are supposed to be coming out after this weekend. Uh, so, hopefully that comes around. As you see, I actually managed to get a couple cosmetics. I went on the beta branch and managed to buy these and they are quite snazzy. Uh, although I don't recommend doing that because it's a bit wonky. As an example, like I am unable to edit this, but my snake for the Confederacy does not have his middle part. Uh, he just has this lower part, which is kind of cool because he has this revolver on the end of his tail, but I don't have the full thing and I can't mess with it right now. So I'd be careful doing that. Uh, just wait until like Monday if you're watching this right as it comes out uh, in order to not waste it. And then that is the patch notes. Uh, quite a long mat, quite a long video uh, because this is quite the beast of a patch. Uh, I definitely like this patch overall. I think a lot of the changes are really good. Uh, cavalry became playable again, which is very nice. Uh, melee got an overhaul, which is really good. And 
Artillery also got a few small changes. Overall, I feel like there's a lot of like a lot more ways to build in this game now, and most of the nations become viable again. A good example is something like the Confederacy, who previously relied on like using attack column alongside cavalry to win its battles, which were both really bad before and are now actually usable. Uh, so that's really nice, and I'm overall excited to see uh, even more updates in the future, but I definitely really like this, uh, and I'm very happy to see uh, a big patch like this come out and, you know, change the game, I think, overall for the better. And just adding in one more thing, although not directly related in this update, it was also shown off that there is new units coming for the United States, Confederacy, and Italy. Uh, notably, uh, a, to a handful of new units and reworks to current units. Uh, we're starting off with the regular cavalry for both the U.S. and the Confederacy, which currently in-game is represented by just being a 6-4 rugged cavalry unit. Uh, these guys are seemingly going to be reworked, uh, where they're going to still be a 6 health 4 cohesion unit, but they will now have range drill and skirmishing, meaning that they are really strong shooting cavalry, uh, which is quite exciting. Uh, and then you also have two new units, the Texas Rangers and the Buffalo Cavalry. The Texas Rangers are for the Confederate States. Uh, these would be rugged shock cavalry, uh, being able to essentially be very fast moving and powerful charging cavalry. Meanwhile, the Buffalo Soldiers would be would be uh, skirmishing and rugged uh, and be very similar to the Italian Carbonieri, uh, although they are actually said to have a slightly higher stat line of 4 health and 4 cohesion. So they would be ever so slightly more powerful. Uh, and also the uh, Texas Rangers would be 3 cohesion and 4 health. And then you'd also have these mountain guns, one for Italy, one for the Confederacy, and one for the United States. Now, we don't know exactly what these weapons are going to be. Uh, I could not find a specific mention for their stat line. Uh, but the speculation seems to be that these are going to be the only are They're going to be uh, artillery pieces, similar to like a Gatling gun, in that they don't have cumbersome on them, because they're very, very light. And on top of that, they're going to have indirect fire since they're essentially uh, like, you know, a mountain gun where they need the fire high. So they have indirect fire and then they might only have two range. Now, that's not confirmed and I don't know for certain. But if that's true, these would be potentially very interesting as a very close range artillery piece that is really, really cheap, which could be an interesting thing, especially as these nations have... Uh, some very aggressive play behind them all three of them so how that exactly plays out i guess we'll see but uh, i just wanted to share that because i think it's really cool anyway uh, with that shared this is all i have for the video today again if you like this video and this update make sure to like and subscribe and let me know down in the comments below about what you like of the update do you overall like what the changes have done or do you dislike them uh, let me know down in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. Uh, keep an eye out because there will be more Fire Maneuver content coming soon. But otherwise, have a good day.